just takes a little bit of practice, you know. I think anybody could do this if they really wanted to. I'm not special. We are in trail making mode. I have a very, very clear goal today that I want to get done and done in the next probably couple hours. So as we left off with this swamp there, uh, we've got to continue on through here and around the corner for a little ways. And uh, this area has only been sort of cleared a little. Uh, we got to keep going around the corner. A little more here, a little more, and up that way. And I want to find out where my filter cloth ends. So I've got a little bit left over on the bit that I finished up with the swamp, and then I've got another 100, 110 feet or so uh, left to roll out. So wherever that gets to, I want to know. Once I've got that figured out, so this bit will be, use the excavator and get it flat and put that out. Then I'm going to take my handy dandy tape measure and measure out what the leftover bit is so that I know exactly how much fabric to buy. Airplanes are so noisy. Okay and and also I need to figure out how much gravel I need because I've got a little bit left that we can bring. I think I think I have enough gravel to get to the very end at least. And then uh, I need to buy more, so I need to know, well, how much gravel do I need? Do I need a whole truck and transfer, or just a truck? Because that would be significantly cheaper. And I would like to spend a little less money, because this project has already been quite a bit, all in all. Each truck and transfer is around $1,000. And each foot of pathway costs about... Uh, what does it cost? It costs about a dollar dollar sixty per foot of cloth roundabouts give or take a few pennies here and there so a buck sixty per foot of cloth plus fabric or plus gravel is turning out to be a good amount <laughs> considering how much has been done so this is the goal I thought I would bring you guys through um, how to use an excavator a little bit as well because that's what I use to uh, clear the pathways um, I just, there's no way to do this any other way. If you've got such a dense, I mean, this is a very dense forest, obviously, and there's no real other way to get through this kind of forest without some kind of machine. So this machine is here for this purpose and this purpose only, um, to finish this up, and then, yeah, and that's it, and no more machine. Uh, because I won't need it for anything, so I won't be doing anything with it. So let's get on with it, and, uh, so just, uh, let's give you an idea. If, if anybody's interested, this is a... Kubota U27-4 uh, excavator. It's got what's called a blade uh, on the bottom here, which is a good feature to have for when it comes to what's called backblading or grading. We use this and we'll just drive backwards and it'll just make a nice smooth finish. We've got an extra feature, a thumb. This is called a thumb. And that thumb kind of goes down like that so that we can pick things up. Having a thumb so it's kind of like it does this, right? So having that thumb allows for a lot of a lot of versatility. It's really, really good. And the bucket on here is not a very big bucket because it's not that big of a machine. But this is called a cleanup bucket. And uh, what it doesn't have is big teeth on the ends. It's just got a blade on the front of that. So uh, that's essentially the features of the excavator. If you were to think about having an excavator, you'd be thinking about these features. Why? Because that's what we use when we're digging or, well, in this case, trail building. So on the inside, it's very interesting. If you've never been inside an excavator, um, this uh, handle here or this joystick here, plus this one here operates the boom and the thumb and the shovel. And then uh, this 
along with these pedals, these are connected directly, operate the tracks. These are called the tracks. So um, you can you can move around either by using your feet, which you, you sometimes have to. Sometimes you have to use your hands and your feet at the same time. Uh, but a lot of times I just use my hands to cruise around. And other than that, the uh, blade control is over that little control over there. This one right here. And uh, on top of here is a little button that allows the tracks to go in high speed mode. But you only really want to do high speed mode when you're sort of more on flat ground and stuff like that. So that's the basics of the control. I thought I'd give you guys a rundown. I'm going to put a chest cam on, put it on wide view, put another camera on top of the, the, uh, the excavator. If you guys are interested, you can see how an excavator is used. And um, Let's get this trail started. It flies everywhere, just chewing on me all over the place. Okay, so flatten this out. Let's get on with this. Okay, we are inside the cab now. And uh, it's good to always let the excavator warm up. And I'm just gonna turn up the throttle a little. Now the throttle allows us to have more power because that's what operates the hydraulics. So the left control stick moves us left right and the shovel in and out the right one left and right makes the shovel go to a digging motion and raises and lowers the boom so our goal is to bring up the blade which is right here see that and so our goal is to go and smooth out the pathway let's do that Okay, so this last control is for the uh, for the, the pivot that's down there. I just wanted that straight, so I'm just lining up my uh, the excavator with tracks, and then I sort of set that straight. And it feels good. Okay, so let's just drag for now. So we'll just come forward like this and lower the blade, and we'll just come backwards with it. I'm looking backwards as I go, so I don't run into anything. Now, the only thing I want to do is uh, just kind of get some of this dirt along with us. We can borrow some of this from the side. Need a bit more power. There we go. Try not to kill too many roots along the way. I'm just going to sort of drag into here because we don't want the sides to be high at all so I'm just going to just skim the top there and drag it over and then we can come back with the blade again and back blade like so looking backwards seeing where I'm going just do a little bit more now there's a big lump of fern right in the middle that I can see so I'm actually going to dig that out. There. And then we can take this dirt along for the ride. So we have extra dirt when we need it. There. Something like that. And then we can go over this one more time over our bluff and lay it down check where I'm going backwards make sure my path is good so you can see every once in a while we get a little bit like this little root here and that will get in the way later so I'm just gonna crunch it out of there we'll grab a little bit of dirt here fill that in grab this stuff from over here kind of a noisy activity usually I have some earbuds in and then I'm not listening to how noisy it is so I'm clean this up here clean this stuff along Yeah. 
Back we go. A little bit at a time. And this is essentially how we uh, make trails around here. Just a little bit at a time. And this is more of the finishing work when, um, when I'm just clearing it. I'm, I'm flattening and sort of getting a pathway kind of figured out. But now I really want to refine this to get ready for a cloth and, and uh, gravel. actually take down this dirt area here a little bit just keep borrowing some dirt from our edges because we're going to need it there are some low spots here and there that we could use the dirt from so we'll just drag it along with us lower the edges anyways because we want the water to go away from our pathway and if our pathways at any point lower than the trail or trail edges then we're not going to have a lot of luck getting rid of the water all right, so I'm just gonna fill in this little tiny little spot in here. I'm gonna back up a little, just a smidge. We just wanna get some dirt right into there, like that. So when I backplate over it in a little bit here, it should look pretty good. Push some of that stuff in. And keep clearing the edges. Bring the dirt along. Just careful and slow. There's no rush to doing this job. Check behind me and start backlading a little bit. And bring some dirt along for the ride. Takes a little bit of practice, you know. I think anybody can do this if they really wanted to. I'm not special. The trick is always not to dig in while you're bringing your shovel along. You don't want to make a big, huge divot. I mean, I'm going to backplate it all in a bit here, anyways. But, either way, go a little more, blade down, having the blade down while we dig and stuff stabilizes the whole excavator. So here's where I want to figure out where my edge is, I'm going to make that pretty good there. And just keep bringing along the dirt, fill in any low spots that we're probably going to have along the way. dig down too deep or nothing though. I kind of want um, just the edges a smidge lower than the rest. That's all. So I'll pick up a fern there so we'll need to use the thumb soon. So I'll we'll just turn that on. Alright, we're really moving now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this fern with the thumb it's hard to flatten out a fern. Just put it over here. That'll be fine. Put the thumb back. And around we go. Funny, I don't listen to, I always listen to music while I'm working an excavator. So I don't tend to hear the sound of the machine as much. Yeah. I hear it now. It's noisy. So here's an area that has a bit of roots around here. So I kind of want to cover these up better. Okay. 
Get that edge a little more sorted out. Just keep scraping along. Now I've got a branch behind me that I've got to sort out here. I'll grab it with the thumb. Take it over there. Get the next one and then I'll deal with this one that's I grabbed the root by accident. Alright, there we go. Sort of scraping away at me. I gotta come forward, stabilize. See if we can grab this guy here. Pretty good. Okay, back to work. Always look behind. Let's see what we can do here. A little hodgepodge area here. the extent of where I'm going to make it with gravel, but that's not our goal today. Our goal is to figure out a little bit more. It's going to flatten this area out a little bit, see where I'm at. Uh, so I'm just sort of just testing the ground to see uh, the hardness, like if I've got some soft spots or, or what. As level as we can get it. All right. Check behind, we go. It's good progress so far. I don't think we've spent too much time on this. Once I get this flat enough, I'll be able to come around with the, the blade again and just really flatten it out and it'll be ready to, to uh, Let's just get this little bit here actually. With the blade. Yeah. And then we can make our way back up. That's pretty good. I think the only thing that I'll be doing otherwise is uh, going in by hand. Just cleaning up little bits and pieces here and there. So here we go with our final pass for this part. And luckily the blade is about a little under the width of what I want the trail to be. But it's really close. This is where I left off. The blade goes down until it touches. And while there, and then we just clean it up. Check backwards always. Just take your time. This is not a rush job. Yeah. Let's come around. And uh, you kind of find that as you're driving, you'll know when your blade is hitting right and when it's not. So there's another big plant that was in the ground. We'll just take that out with the thumb, chuck it out to the side. It gets in the way, it makes lumps and stuff like that. So I'm gonna come around one more time here and uh, just sort of clean up this little edge. It seems to have floated above. There we go. Okay. Let's move forward a little. 
travel over top of it. I don't want to hit it with the blade, so I'm just going to kind of get over that. And then I can take this dirt that is gathered and just sort of clean it up with a bucket like this without hitting that root that I know that's there, that I've buried. Good yeah, let's keep going. Uh, let's clean up this bit here. Let's take a look at what has transpired. Now, the, um, the pathway up until here is pretty good. Just needs a little bit of, little bit of raking like we've done before. We just sort of kick around. And... So up until there, I'd say we're looking sharp. This is definitely flat, very, very fabricable, and you know, just little bits and pieces here and there to rake, but fabricable and gravel. And here's the bridge. So I'll clean this up with a rake. But for the most part, it's ready. A few roots and stuff to remove. But other than that, I think we're looking sharp. So the next step is to go grab the fabric and, uh, and lay it out and see how far we get. We're actually probably raking first. So we gotta get a rake, clean it up, fabric measure. estimation of where I would end up was very close. I knew I'd make it to these two hemlocks and a cedar, but uh, I don't know, eight feet short, but it was close. So now that this is all carpeted, <laughs> looks pretty cool. It's starting to look like a path now. Everything got flattened, roots got taken out, all that kind of business. It's pretty warm. A lot of bugs, flies, mosquitoes and stuff to slap at and get rid of. So now that this is done, I need to measure out what I need left for fabric to be able to go pick that up. And I can also estimate gravel. So that leaves me with this little doohickey here. I bought a long time ago, like 10 bucks or something like that. It was used. The weird thing is, is that uh, it's divided up on one side. Uh, well, one's metric and one's feet but the feet are divided up into like one tenth of sections. It's kind of weird. Like here, I'll show you real quickly. You can see here how it goes. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one foot. Uh, what is that? Yeah, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna measure this out and I'll be right back. Okay, I have measured out 137 feet, but I'm not taking any chance. I'm gonna get 150 just in case. So about 150 feet to go, plus this, whatever. I just laid out 110 for sure, plus whatever this is, maybe, I don't know, 20 feet or so. So 130 plus 140, 270 feet left to go. That's quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit. Definitely don't have enough gravel for that, but uh, I'm gonna get what I can get done today. Finish up this bit. Hopefully 
Hopefully it's been a little bit interesting learning about excavators. And uh, this is really coming along. I'm really happy. So this will be a bit of an odd short one, maybe more construction. But when it's done, this will be a beautiful little trail that just kind of curves around, goes up to the top. And it'll be great. Okay, off to work. I'm moving gravel now. Just another day in the life. <laughs> the sound of the birds is amazing in here. Okay, it's the end of day. The sun is on its way down. That is the west. This is south. This is the swamp. As you guys have already seen, a lot of good progress that I just conclude on this video to let you know what has been done. And it has been absolutely fantastic. So the swamp ends pretty much where that gator is, maybe a little bit this way. This is where we ended off on the last video where I had all of this, or the last clip, last bit fabriced here. Got all this gravel down. A little bit more, a little bit more. We're gonna come around this hairpin corner. <laughs> That's just a nice corner. Look at the forest though. It is gorgeous here. And all the way up in here, I have a little tiny bit more gravel left on the pile, but otherwise I'm pretty much done. Can't get to the end. Can't get there. Don't have enough gravel for that, which means I need 150 feet plus another, I'd say, 50. So maybe 200 feet, 200 feet left to go. There are mosquitoes everywhere. It's a little bit wetter down here than it is sort of up at the top. Oh, the sun is bright. And uh, so there's a lot of bugs down in here, but man, this trail is just phenomenal. So I flattened this out, as I said, I got to buy some fabric, as I said, Get some more gravel, as I also said. This area still is a little bit sort of touch and go. I gotta clean it up a lot, but it's gonna make its way all the way up to there. And this is I've got actually to the point where in this in this in the progress of, or the process of doing this, where I'm driving the, the gator with the gravel. Um, the long way around to get the gravel here. Like this gravel here is, is likely more than halfway compared to if I were to just drive down that way from the gravel pile. So I've been kind of thinking, gosh, I wonder if I should just go get uh, tomorrow's Canada Day. Everything's closed. Everything's shut down. Can't get nothing. I think I might just take the weekend off, but uh, it's the weather, you know, dependent on the weather. So anyways, whatever, this is done. So it goes up this way, as you can see, it goes down that way, around the corner. It's gonna go up along that way there. That's where the trail goes and boop, all the way around. Still working on that idea to get the drone up so you can see a map and either way, it's the end of the day, I'm finished. Uh, I actually have an appointment I gotta get to, to check out some, a hoof on a horse that's got a problem. So I gotta get boogieing and get out of here. But hopefully that's been an interesting video today and uh, you've enjoyed that. I'm going to head back up to the top, get myself a snack and call it a day here. Very, very happy with this. Almost done. Another, what did I say, 250 feet? 250 feet is nothing <laughs> in the long run. I don't know which way I want to go home. Do I want to go up through the dirt or take the trail? Dirt? I think we'll go up through the dirt. You guys can cut out here if you want to, but I'll take you up to the top also if you want to. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. And if so, here we go. still have to sort of smooth out and it'll lead down to where we were. And off we go! Home!